Hi. So welcome back. And now we're going to start with John Keats or continue with John Keats, depending on which order you watch these videos in. So the first thing I have to do, however, is give you a tiny little lesson on Greek history. Um, it's, I say history with a question because it was Greek history, but it's also still around. These are called Greek urns. Okay. You can see there's always, there's a picture of this guy is playing like a lute. See there he's, he's got kind of a musical instrument of some sort. The back, you have another character and he's playing a musical in, a flute of some sort. Okay, and then here you have a little bitty guy. Again, these are all over Greece, okay? This is Dionysus, the god of wine, so he's got a little wine cup there, and that's just a decoration. But um, Greece ha sells these to tourists, and they come in three levels, I guess you could say, of quality. This kind of level here, this little guy and this little guy, slightly larger one, they are extremely cheap. Okay. They, they come in cheap ones for tourists to buy, or they come in, um, more expensive one that tourists buy and like display in their homes. And then the third level is museum only, you know, you're, it's, they're in the tens of millions or excuse me, tens of thousands of dollars up to millions of dollars. And these are the ones that are old and extremely important to history. So needless to say, I didn't buy any of those, <laughs> but they all are the similar style. What happens is you have an, a mud color. Let me show you what I'm talking about. In this one, you can kind of see down inside of it. Okay, that's that terracotta style color. They're all that terracotta style and orange, like here, and black. That's the color. Now this, this little guy, like I said, this is one that was cheap and sent, uh, sold to tourists, is painted. But the very old ones, like the picture here, or like this picture, they're very, um, very intricately detailed. That orange color and black color is always the case. They're always orange and black. They were used to transport water and olive oil or wine. Uh, depending on the size, sometimes they're a little shorter and kind of stubby looking. Sometimes they're tall like these. Sometimes they were carried um, on their heads, that sort of thing. They're just extremely common in Greece. They're everywhere. Now, the reason why I bring all this up is because John Keats had a thought. He said, you know, this is a perfect example of stopping time. And that's what this whole poem is about, stopping time. Now on the surface, you're like, okay, duh, you stop time when you take a picture. But you have to realize that John Keats was dying at the time. John Keats was a very sick man. Um, he spent a lot of years sick uh, and it the tuberculosis was a horrible way to die. And it was a long, slow, painful death. So what he did was he noticed everything in this time. So one of the things he noticed was the idea that you could pause life. And that's what he's talking about here. These are paused, these little moments in time are paused forever and they will be there forever. Um, he might be thinking about his own forever because his life is going to be so short. He was like 26 or so when he died. So, you know, he didn't have a whole lot of time on this earth to get to spend. So he remembered and he spent as much, po much time as possible doing really great things. Okay. So let's look at one of those great things right now. He says, heard melodies are sweet, but those unheard are sweeter. Therefore soft pipes play on not to the sensual ear, but more appreciated pipe to the spirit songs of no tone. Now he stops here. Now see, he's going to go back and forth and make some different points. So here he's just simply talking about appreciating music and playing on. And then he stops and he says, fair youth, fair. It means attractive, pretty, fair youth beneath the trees. You cannot leave your song, nor ever can those trees be bare. Okay, there's one image, okay? 
he's imagining, literally visualizing some trees with a, a guy leaning against the tree. Now he will always be leaning against that tree and that tree will always have leaves on it. Bold lovers, never, never can you kiss. Though winning near the goal, do not grieve, for she cannot fade. Though you have no bliss, forever will you love and she be pretty. Okay, this is image number two. You have two people about to kiss, okay? They're bold lovers. They are a boyfriend, girlfriend, they're about to kiss, but they're never going to get it all the way there. They're just almost, but the good news is, she cannot fade, meaning she's always going to be pretty. And even though you don't have any bliss, meaning happiness, you haven't actually kissed, you will forever be in love and she will forever be pretty. Okay, let's go on to the next stanza here. Uh, happy, happy limbs. Okay, limbing, limbs meaning tree that cannot shed your leaves nor ever bid the spring goodbye. And happy musician, never tired, forever piping songs, forever new. Now, here you have a musician under a tree or near a tree, and the tree can never lose its leaves because it will always be spring in this image. And the happy musician is never tired because he is always piping away, just like the one I showed you a minute ago. He's always playing his flute. More happy love, more happy, happy love, forever warm and still to be enjoyed. The love is forever warm and still to be enjoyed forever panting and forever young, all breathing human passion far above that leaves a heart, a sorrowful burning forehead and a dry tongue. Okay, so this love will forever be passionate and warm and wonderful. Okay, who are these coming to the sacrifice to that green altar, O mysterious priest? Do you lead that heifer mooing at the skies? And all her sides decorated with garlands. Okay, stop right there a second. That's image number, whoops, I left one out. This is image number three. So this one is image number four. Now we're looking at, unfortunately for the cow, we're looking at a cow being led to sacrifice. A heifer, female cow, mooing at the skies. So this cow is being led with it decorated with garlands. Okay, so you have a cow being decorated, going to be sacrificed, and the priest walking it through the town to whatever location where it's going to be sacrificed. Well, the good news is for the cow, it is never going to get there. It's always going to be on the way to sacrifice. What little town by river or seashore, mountain built with peaceful fortress, is emptied of its folk this morning? And little town, your streets forevermore will be silent and not a soul to tell why you are empty and can ever return. So we have image number five here. This is an image of an empty town. Now I've always kind of felt like the town was on the way to the sacrifice because they're in the same stanza. I felt like they were connected. Um, I don't have proof of that. It just felt like we have a cow on the way up. So let's have some people on the way up too. You have a situation here very similar to, uh, well, I like to use the example of the cover of Abbey Road from the Beatles. You have four guys who will forever be crossing that street. Paul will forever be barefoot. John will forever be wearing white. You have a moment in time that is just stuck there, and you can look at it as, um, just a snippet of life that will always be in that same position. And that's what Keats was talking about. He looked at this simple little, tiny little urn and found depth. That's what they do though. That's what poets are for, right? Okay, we have, you may or may not have a few more poems to go and I'll see you on the other side when we continue with romantic poetry.